very directly is related to extractable starch yields. Um, how much starch we can actually recover from the corn sample. So uh, just to quickly recap, um, what is the corn wet milling process? So here is a very simple schematic of what happens in a corn wet milling plant. When you process a bushel of corn, bushel is what we use in the US, but that is 25.4 kilograms of corn. When it goes through the corn wet milling facility, we get about 31.5 pounds of starch, which can then be converted into sweeteners or can be fermented into all kinds of uh, value added products. In addition to the starch or the sweeteners, we get three co products. The first one is the corn oil, which is primarily used for human food consumption. Uh, then we get about 12.4 uh, pounds of corn gluten feed. Uh, because of the high fiber content, it is primarily used for uh, feed ingredient in ruminant animal diets. And then the protein, uh, which is the corn gluten meal, because of the oxygenated carotenoids, the coloring compounds that are present in the corn kernel, they get concentrated in corn gluten meal. That is why it has been um, uh, uh, an ingredient for poultry food because it gives yellow color to the egg yolks. Um, so this is this is what corn wet milling process is. Now, uh, this industry is a 70 plus billion dollar industry worldwide. And if you look at how many products are produced from a corn wet milling plant, about 1,000 different products are produced and they can be classified under food, feed, fuel, and industrial products. So these are consumer products. So everything all the way from cosmetics, plastics, medicines, textiles, uh, food products, um, syrups, um, uh, adhesives, all these different consumer products are coming from the corn wet milling process. Uh, it's a very complicated process. You will see that this afternoon uh, when Ibrahim talks about it. Uh, there's a lot of recycle loops that are there uh, and a lot of water and energy is used in the process. Uh, we can break down this entire process into five major unit operations. So first one is the steeping and we learned about steeping process, how we prepare the corn kernel before it can be processed and taken apart into its individual components. Then we have the germ separation and washing, fiber separation and washing, starch and protein separation, and then finally starch washing before we get our final product. This process is a very capital expensive process. If you are going to build a, a brand new uh, corn wet milling plant uh, that is processing 200,000 bushels of corn per day, you're looking at cost, you know, excess of $300 million in total capital cost. These are US numbers, um, but it is a very capital expensive process. It's also a very energy and water intensive process. We use a lot of water and we use a lot of energy in corn wet milling process. Now, a lot of this capital goes in the steeping process. And we talked about the steeping process that depending upon the type of corn that you're using in your plant, that steeping time can range anywhere from 24 hours to upward of 48 hours. And as I mentioned, hard endosperm corn requires at least 48 hours of steeping time. If you cut that time in half, if you can do that steeping in just 24 hours, you save a lot of money in capital cost. You save a lot of energy cost. So you can really optimize a process by choosing the right raw material in your facility. Here is the composition. This is a very generalized composition of number two yellow dent corn. And you will see that typically corn will have about 72% starch content. This is the content, how much starch is present in the corn kernel. And that is about 72%.
that number can range from 70% to about 74%. But that is a typical starch content number in any corn type. However, we need to make a distinction between starch yield or starch extractability and starch content. When we say starch yield, we are talking about how much starch are you actually able to recover from that corn. And that is what is more important to a corn wet milling facility. So starch yield or extractability improves profitability because we are in the business of making starch. More starch we make, more profitability for our process. And as I mentioned earlier, what that refers to is how much starch can we actually remove from that corn kernel in the wet milling process. So starch content is how much starch is present in kernel. Starch extractability is how much starch can be extracted from the corn kernel. You can have a corn sample that has very high starch content, but when you process that corn, you might not be able to recover all that starch. You can have a very poor starch yield, even with very high starch content. U.S. corn over the years has been bred in order to improve the starch extractability. Over several decades, corn hybrids have been improved in order to give very high starch extractability of the corn sample. And starch extractability concept is not very well understood by a lot of wet millers, especially the people that are in the procurement business. People that are buying the corn, they don't understand the concept of starch extractability. They know what starch content is, but they don't understand what starch extractability is. And what they try to do is to buy the cheapest corn that they can buy that still has very high starch content. But as you will see from the data, that is a mistake. Buying corn based on its starch content is a huge mistake, especially in a corn wet milling plant. To illustrate that point, here is data from 131 corn hybrids. When we measure the starch content of these 131 corn hybrids, that number was somewhere between 71 to 74 percent. So there's not a huge variation in these 131 corn hybrids. However, when you process these 131 corn hybrids, you see that starch yield is all over the place, all the way from 56 percent starch yield to as high as 72 percent. These are very, very high extractable starch corn hybrids. In general, if you're processing commodity corn, you will be getting about 67, 68, maybe even 69% starch yields. But that is what you in general will get from commodity corn. But there are certain hybrids that you can get that will give you as high as 72% starch yields. On, also on the other end, you can end up with a corn hybrid that does not give you very high starch yields. So here is a correlation between starch content and starch extraction. Yes. Yes, please. You can ask questions. Oh, this is a good point. If you have any questions as I'm going along, please just raise your hand so that we can have a dialogue. Yes. Are these starch yields uh, based on uh, clean corn? Because there are some two ways. I mean, uh, the, uh, you get the corn to the yes, plant. Yes. You uh, extract uh, the 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 broken corn. No. And then you have the clean corn. No. Based on okay. So so yeah. Let me let me elaborate on that. Generally, when we clean the corn, we only remove foreign material. We don't remove brokens. Okay. So usually in a corn sample, we have what we call BCFM broken corn and foreign material. Foreign material can be dead birds, could be corn cobs, could be soybean seeds, you know, it can be anything. It's anything that is foreign to corn, even soybean, you know, we remove those. We remove any foreign material that is in the sample. But we don't remove the brokens. 
or the dust from the sample. <laughs> yeah. So here is a very good correlation between starch content and starch extractability. And you can see that it is a positive correlation. That means if you have a corn sample that has high starch content, there is a very high chance, 65% chance, that you will get high starch extractability. However, this model still does not explain 35% of the variability in the sample. So you're getting a positive correlation. So if you're buying corn just based on content, it's a hit and miss. You might not get a corn that has high starch extractability or you might get it, okay? Uh, this model still does not explain 35% of the variability in this, in this model. So going just by starch content is not a good way of doing it. Now, I covered this earlier that these are the three important things that affect starch extractability. Genetics is number one criteria. 85% of the variability in starch yield is coming because of genetics. If you have better genetics, you will get good starch yields. Environment we cannot control. You know, this is the agronomic environment. Wherever you're growing this crop, you have to deal with the environment for that particular region. But we can definitely have an effect on how we are um, um, processing the corn after the harvest, how we are drying it, how we are transporting it, and, and how we are storing it. As I told you earlier that based on genetics, you can end up with flint corn or dent corn. And even in dent corn, you can end up with mostly floury endosperm corn, or you can have something in the middle where it is a cross between flint corn and dent corn. And that is mostly what most of the wet millers are processing. Is that if you go and analyze the corn samples in your facility, you will see mostly these are hard endosperm corn. And generic and softer endosperm is what you need in order to maximize starch extractability. So one other thing is that when you transport corn, you know, when that corn gets, you know, collected at the field, and then this truck will take it to an elevator, then it goes on to these export terminals, and then eventually, uh, you know, inland ports, when this corn comes into the country, it has gone through many of these channels. It has moved through many of these channels. And as I mentioned earlier this morning, that every time this corn moves, you can create a lot of brokens. And that happens a lot with US corn. Because US corn has been artificially dried because of our very short harvest. And because this corn goes all the way to a foreign country, it will create a lot of brokens and dust. But one thing is very important that US corn does not have a lot of foreign material in it. We lump everything together, BCFM, broken corn and foreign material. Mostly U.S. corn is broken corn and not too much of foreign material. So that is something very important to understand. And here is some sampling that was done of two different samples. One was U.S. corn and you can see this corn has a lot of brokens and dust. Look at the hand, look at the fingers. You can see a lot of this white powder. Okay, this is what typically a U.S. corn sample looks like when you sample it at an international location. And here's what Brazilian corn looks like. Okay, you can see it's darker in color and you don't see a lot of broken and look at the fingers. There's no, no dust on the fingers. That is a difference between U.S. corn and Brazilian corn at an international location. Now what happens is the people that buy the corn they look at this variation, visual variation between the samples and they say, well, both these samples have same starch content. They both have about 72% starch in that corn sample, but this one looks really bad. There's a lot of broken and dust. And then this corn gets rejected over this corn, thinking this is a better sample for wet milling. 
However, that thinking is very wrong. The difference between the two corn samples is that this one is a softer endosperm corn. This one is a hard endosperm corn that has a lot of dark yellow colored kernels compared to that corn. And it will be very hard to get starch out from these corn kernels. And that is why you don't get a lot of broken in this corn. One, it is hard endosperm and it has been more gently dried on the field rather than artificially dried like US corn. So here is another sample that was recovered at International Plant. Here is US corn. Look at the broken and dust in it. And look at the Brazilian corn and Argentinian corn. And Brazilian corn is much darker than Argentinian corn, but both these samples don't have a lot of broken and dust in them. But if you are in wet milling business, you're making a mistake right here, choosing for these samples. You want to maximize your starch yield. This sample will give you much better starch yield than these two samples. But the issue is, when you talk to these international plants, that this this sample, because of superior genetics, is going to result in higher starch yields, in better millability of corn, in shorter steep times. They don't believe that because they say, well, yeah, in US, this corn will do really well because it hasn't traveled all this. There's less broken than dust when you process it in the US. But when we process it, we get this kind of corn sample. What we tried to show them is that even this sample, if processed, will result in higher starch yields. And we have been doing this study for three years. Now we have three years of data where we picked up these samples at international locations and then brought them back into the US, into our lab, to very carefully analyze the starch yields from these samples. Now what I'm gonna do is present some of this data to you. So first, let me just briefly talk about the study in this study, we started to sample different geographical locations, okay? In year one, we picked up corn samples from three different locations, international locations. In year two, we picked up corn from six different international locations. And year three, which is the year that we are still completing the data, we sampled five locations. And here are these locations. So Colombia, Egypt, um, Indonesia, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Indonesia, uh, sorry, um, uh, Taiwan, and uh, South Korea. These are the overall six locations where we picked up the samples. Composite sample was recovered from the warehouse. As that corn sample arrived at the facility, we got it from their warehouse and then brought it back to University of Illinois to study the, the, the starch yields of these samples. There's a question. Yeah, yeah. does this uh, do we from Terrios, Indonesia? So uh, the general best practice for corn that goes to the steeping process is we do the corn cleaning process. It's a pressed dust, cobs, and also the broken corns. But as you said, in your start extract, extractability is you count all the corn beside the foreign materials. So as uh, I study in the corn wet milling process that if the dust and also the broken corn goes through the steeping process, it will uh, affect the quality of the steeping. So how do you explain that and how do you uh, yeah. expect me to put all the broken and the dust to the steeping process? And if we still want to use say, U.S. corn, uh, what, what what we can do because we we will separate that in our general practices. What we can do to the broken corn and also the dust and also the yeah yeah all that we separate from the corn cleaning. Thank you. Yeah. This looks like a planted question to me, you know, because uh, this is this is exactly what I'm going to address. Okay. Um, uh, because if you separate that dust and broken, even before putting it in your facility, obviously you will not going to see good starch yields. Because you're taking all that starch out in that broken and dust, 
and putting it directly into your feed. So there is a, there's a process that you can use to deal with this broken in dust. And there are plants around the world that use that process to deal with broken in dust. If the brokens are less, you can run it in your facility. And your point is very well taken. Yes, broken in dust cause channeling in steep tanks. So corn doesn't get steeped very well if you have a lot of broken and dust in your <coughs> steep tanks. Another thing that happens is that the dust will blind the screens on your steep tanks. Remember when I showed you the steep tanks? It will plug up those screens and then dewatering of the water is an issue. Another issue that is that a lot of that starch gets solubilized in water and when that goes into out with the steep water, when that steep water goes through a heat transfer or a heat exchanger, it's going to cause a lot of fouling and, and coat the heat transfer surface. So yes, these are very real issues. And that is why you don't put dust and brokens in your, in your steep tanks. But this is material that can be easily separated out and processed separately in what is called a short steep process and then put back into the facility. And that is something that many plants around the world do that, especially if they are getting a lot of broken in their corn. And they will still be much ahead by doing it because they will still be able to extract more starch here from their samples. And I'm gonna present you some data on that. Okay, so first thing that we did is when we brought those samples back, we did the composition analysis of those samples. We did the NIR composition, we measured the starch content, the protein content, the oil, and the fiber content in the raw corn samples. Then we did the floaters test to measure the endosperm hardness. And we did it two different ways. One is the floaters test, but you can also measure what is called true density, or you can measure what's called the test weight. And that will also give you the similar information. So test weight was measured of these samples. And then we looked for the BCFM, broken corn and foreign material in these samples. And after doing all this analysis on the raw corn, these corn samples were then processed by that short uh, lab scale procedure in order to measure the extractable starch yields. And that was done using this procedure. You can see that we start with very small sample. It is then ground and then uh, do the first grind, second grind, fiber separation, fiber wash, and then tabling to separate the starch and the protein fraction. And then we can measure these tables and very accurately predict how much starch you're going to get. And this procedure, as I said, has been published. This was published back in 1996. So it's been a really long time. And one thing that we did is we correlated the starch yields that we get from our lab procedure with the industrial plant. And we were able to show that we can very accurately predict what the extractable starch yield is going to be in a commercial facility by just processing 100 grams of sample. So here's the first set of data. I'm gonna start with South Korea. Remember, I, uh, I mentioned that we have analyzed six locations. I'm just presenting two locations and only one year of data. But I'll present at the end the cumulative data across all the locations average starch yields of U.S. corn and corn that originates at other parts of the world. So here is the South Korean data, and we got three samples from South Korea, U.S. corn, Brazilian corn, and Serbian corn. And you can see, first thing is, in the test weight, U U.S. corn has a lower test weight than Brazilian corn. But Serbian corn has even less test weight than U.S. corn. That means this is more softer endosperm corn. Remember there was a question this morning that do I just look for softer endosperm and I have my winner, you know, that will give me high start yield. Well, here you will see that here is a sample that is softer than U.S. corn, but still gives you lower start yields. Now, if you look at BCFM, obviously U.S. corn had a lot of BCFM compared to Brazilian. It was like several fold higher than Brazilian corn. But you, uh, Serbian corn also had a lot of BCFM. 
but less than U.S. corn. And the range was much higher between the replicates as well. But when you look at the starch yields, if you look at the starch content, oh, sorry, if you look at the starch content, all three samples had same starch content, 72%. But when you look at how much starch you were able to get out, in case of U.S. corn, it was 66.6%. In case of Brazilian corn, we are only getting 61.6%. And in Ukrainian corn, we are getting 65.7%. This number is more important. Because this is telling you, this is the number that is going to affect your profitability. Even though you started with all the three samples with same starch content, but you got maximum starch coming out from U.S. corn. If you look at the fiber samples, you get the cleanest fiber with U.S. corn, with lowest starch content in it. Brazilian corn, Brazilian fiber had a lot of starch in it, in this fiber. And so was the Serbian corn. Next, I'm going to present results from Egypt. In Egypt, we picked up samples from Argentina, from US, Ukraine, and from Brazil. Look at the test weights first. Brazilian corn had the highest test weight that tells you it's a harder endosperm corn, followed by Argentina, and then US. And Ukrainian corn had even lower test weight than US corn. If you look at BCFM, Ukrainian corn had the maximum BCFM. And here's the thing, here's the difference. When we say BCFM for US corn, we are mostly talking about broken corn. But when we say BCFM from Ukrainian corn, there's a lot of foreign material in this. There's definitely broken, a lot of broken, but there's a lot of foreign material in this corn. But definitely Brazilian corn and Argentinian corn have very low BCFM. But when you look at the starch yields, if you look at the starch content, all of them had very similar starch content. But look at the starch yield or starch recovery, and you'll see that U.S. corn was able to get 69.11% starch yield. Brazilian corn had 65% starch yield. Ukrainian had the worst starch yield of only 63.6%. And here's the Argentinian. Well, Argentinian was even lower than Ukraine in case of samples from Egypt. If you look at the fiber content, again, U.S. corn had the cleanest fiber of all the four samples compared to Brazilian, Ukrainian, or the Argentinian corn. So, and this is location after location, we get the same results. At all other locations, it's the same results. So now I'm gonna just present the average across all locations, what the start yields were. So here is the first year data. And in this case, we sampled three locations, US, Brazil, and Argentina, uh, original corn from three different locations. And on an average, US corn at all these three locations gave about 33 to 3.5% higher start yield. Now here's the important thing, 1% increase in start yield for a plant grinding 1,000 metric tons per day will result in about a million dollar of additional revenue. Per year. Per year, per year. So that is a very big number. That's the money that you're leaving behind if you are rejecting that corn, or if you're taking your brokens and dust out and putting it directly into your feed. This study has already been published. So anybody can get this paper, download it, and read all the data that we just talked about for all the locations, all the information about BCFM, the chemical composition of corn samples, everything. Here's the data from second year. And in second year, we got all these different origins, US, Brazilian, Argentinian, Indonesian, Serbian, and Ukrainian. And on an average, US corn gave about 2.3, 2.7, 2.07, 2%, 4.2% higher start yield. This is across all locations. We are averaging the values across all locations, and this is the data. And this information has also been published. 
This paper just got accepted in Start Journal. So again, you can download this and, and get this paper and read up on all this data from year two. This is the data from year three. This work is still going on. We have not completed this because we're still missing some samples at some locations. But preliminary data, again, US corn compared to Brazilian, Argentinian, and Indonesian corn will result in about 1.7 to about 3.8% higher start yields across the locations. Now, yes, go ahead. Uh, hello, I'm from China. Uh, I, have, I do have one question about uh, this uh, result. And it seems uh, they're from Brazil, Argentina, and other countries, they have improved a lot because the gap between small. But uh, is there any difference compared with this uh, gap? And the other, thing, other question is about the US. It seems that there was still in the 967. 768 yeah. have change. Yeah. So any improvements we work from these two years, it, but I didn't see any improvements there. Yeah. So okay, very good question. So this is average data across many different locations. There are if you if you read our papers, you would see that there's a variation in US corn at different locations. But this was average across all locations. Same thing, Brazilian corn was average across many different locations. Okay? And your point is well taken that in year three, the, the difference between Brazilian and US corn has dropped on an average. This happens in year to year, you know, this based on every year there's a better crop or maybe next year it might go down again. But what I'm trying to present here is average data across many different locations. Okay, so I'm not comparing individual. If you want to see the individual locations, you, you, you read our paper. You have the whole information, okay? Now, what we want to do now is go and talk to international plants. First of all, we started going around the place and visiting many different international convert milling plants. And two plants, one that is doing short steep, another one that is not doing a short steep, shared with us that on an average, they get about 2% higher start yield with US corn compared to corn from South America. And they're doing short steep. There's another plant that we visited, commercial plant, and they said they get about on an average one plus percent higher start yield with US corn compared to corn that originates in South America. And they don't do short steep. So some plants where they don't see a lot of brokens or if the price of broken corn is very good, you don't have to set up a broken steeping system. But if you are, if you want to maximize your start tier and you are seeing a lot of broken, you can set up what is called a short steep system to take care of the brokens in the dust and still use that back into the facility to maximize your start tier. Because what you're doing is by rejecting that corn, or by taking out the broken and dust and putting it into corn gluten feed, you're throwing away a lot of money. 1%, even half a percent increase in starch yield for a wet milling plant can have a major effect on profitability. So conclusions are US corn is generally soft endosperm and it has more broken than kernels. US corn results in better extractable starch yields compared to corn from other locations. On an average, this is on an average across three three years, it will be about 1.7 to 4.2 percent higher extractable starch yields, and every one percent increase can result in about a million dollars of additional revenue. All these numbers were done with U.S. market prices, so so just so that you know, you know, in every each country that price might be slightly different, but these calculations were done with U.S. market prices. So the next step is to conduct these plant trials of US corn at commercial locations. And we are looking for industrial partners that are interested in doing this trial. So if you are one of those that are interested in doing this trial, please see us after the, after the conference or during the break. We are looking for more industrial partners that want to do this. And another thing which is very important for us and that we plan to do 
uh, we have a proposal that we'd like to study the effect of steep time on profitability. If you use corn, which is softer endosperm, you can reduce your steep time. Effectively, that means you can increase your grind rate without increasing your capacity. If you have excess capacity in your mill house and not excess capacity in your steep house, you can increase your capacity by switching over to US corn because you'll be steeping for shorter time compared to corn that originates in South America. That work we are going to do and, and, and get some official data and then present that data hopefully at the next conference. And maybe some, some data from these commercial trials as well. I think that's all I have and with that I can take some more questions. Uh, before I end, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the funding agencies for the study. Uh, Illinois Corn Marketing Board has been funding this proposal. Uh, and so we are very thankful for them uh, for the past three years. And U.S. Grains Council that has also been funding the study uh, for the past three years and, and visit to the international occasion. Thank you very much.